put our hands together for God tonight. You know what I mean? Yeah, amen. God is good all the time. God is good. And you are a child of his. You accept Jesus Christ and check it out. He's got a place for you. Tell somebody, he's got a place for you. You are so valued. Man, that's a, I just, makes me want to preach or something. Because so many of us, you know, I mean, that's not a new message, but really, we, we find, we're always trying to find our value and people around us and what we do and what we, you know, accomplish or who loved me today or who's telling me good things and, who, and people lie to us. And so we devalued and, and we forget, man, our value is found on the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Father values you so much tonight. He loves you so much. And he, it don't matter what people around you are doing. It don't matter what we're going through. Don't ever forget the value that God has placed on your life. So if you have your Bibles tonight, we're going to read out of Galatians chapter 6, trying to trudge on through Galatians. If you're on the mood to hear about... Huh? Need my pen. Yeah, that's been a good pen. Of course, so was the one I gave you last week. It was a good pen, too. <laughs> but that's good, man, because I'm for you. Galatians chapter 6. We're going to read a couple verses. Verse 6. It says this. It says, The one who is taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from his own flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Pray with me. Father, we love you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for your instructions. And so, Lord, I just pray, Father, that you would bring your word to life. It wouldn't be about what I say, but it would be about you speaking to our hearts in a personal way. Whatever it is that we need to hear tonight, God. Just draw us near to you, comfort us, encourage us, give us strength to, to be more like you. Lord, we love you, we thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. So, Paul's kind of turned the page here, and, and we're kind of getting to the point where he's given final instruction, so to speak, this last, uh, last chapter, a little over a chapter, and he's given them final instructions to the Galatians, you know, the Galatian people that... Uh, the place that he loved, the people that he loved, and he's, he's been fighting for them, reminding them about the simple faith of Jesus Christ, about how that changes their life and how they receive the Holy Spirit by believing Jesus and not in, in the, so much all the other stuff that was kind of being put on them. And so at this point, he, he's encouraging them that even though it is a sim, simple message and it is just about believing Jesus, he, he's encouraging them now uh, to walk. And live by the Spirit of God. Walk according to what God's telling them and being obedient to what God, God says. Because how many of you know, and we've said this here before, but at the end of the day, the proof's in the pudding, amen? I mean, we're not doing stuff to be saved, but when we're living a life that's been changed by Jesus Christ, it, it's going to come out of us, you know? And He's encouraging them to, to not just believe in the name of Jesus and, 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 and do things that the Jews are doing or do certain things, but to live in a way that this life comes out of you. And I don't know if you realize this, but we desperately, in this day and age, we need, we need Christians, we need children of God who are living in a way that produces fruit. Amen? We need, we need to be living in a way that, that good stuff is coming out of us. Because how many of you know God is the author of life? And everything that God does, it produces life. And, and it goes forth from that place. And, and, and we need to be people that live in a way. And I'm not saying any specific ways, but just living in a, li a way that's fruitful. Living in a way where people don't have to ask you, hey, are you a Christian? Hey, are you a follower of God? But living in a way where hopefully... People can recognize it because the reality is this, and I say this a lot probably, but we are not called just to be saved, but we're called to live a life, a productive life that, that, that helps establish the kingdom of God. And, and I don't know, uh, I mean, you've all heard my story and, and, and all that stuff, but, but here, here's where God began to, to, to really mash me. 
and the Holy Spirit came alive in me, and God began to challenge me, and it was in this right here. You know, because this is what we do. We look around the world, and we see the, the way we think things ought to be. And we see corruption, and we see everything that's not right. And, and I remember, you know, God challenged me and said, hey, I don't want you to just have this little, this little comfortable uh, feeling of, hey, I'm saved, and, and that's good. But, but he began to challenge me about living outside of myself, living, living. Because, you know, it's like this. You, you pray for your friends, right, and, and they have problems, and they have issues. And, but then we're right there in the middle of doing it with them. But we have this peace of, oh, well, I'm saved, you know. And God began to challenge me. He said, hey, don't just wish your buddies were doing better or wish they weren't dealing with addiction. He says, why don't you start doing something different and living in a way in the midst of that that shows them that there's a different way? Are you, does that make sense at all? Living where, where it's coming out of us and letting some people know that God's done something in here, man, and he's did it for me, and he'll do it for you. And he brought me through something, and yours may be different, but he wants to bring you out of this too, okay? But people want to see that, and our world needs to see that. In other words, he's challenging them to be aware of their lives. To examine, to see what's being produced. You know, he, he, he had just given the example a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the fruit of the Spirit. And he talked about to, to examine yourself and see whether we're operating according to the flesh, and we see what's produced there, or the fruit of the Spirit. If we'll just look at our lives, we, we can see kind of where we're at. It's a good way to, to test ourselves, so to speak. And then last week, we, Paul encouraged them to, to bear each other's burdens. How many of you know we all need a little bit of help sometimes, amen? He said, bear each other's burdens. Number one is because we all need help. And number two is we all need some accountability in our life. We need to be lifting each other up. We need to be carrying each other. But at the same time, we're called to, you know, not expect everybody else to carry my stuff either because he closed last time saying, hey, carry your own load. Pick up your cross. Don't just expect everybody else to, to carry you around, but you help them, but also be willing to, to carry your own cross and so that's that and today we're in verse six and i'm glad that you know if you've been coming to church here that we're just going verse but verse to verse and i didn't just pick this out today but in verse six it says the one who is taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him and so first when when you read this verse you're kind of like if you look at it you think well this is almost out of place because it's not really connected to the verses before and and are the ones that are coming after. So why would Paul talk about giving to the church and giving to the, the one who teaches you the word of God at this point? But maybe if we see it all, maybe it'll connect better than we realize. But I think, to me, what it really stands out to me is it points the value and the importance that Paul was placing on the word of God being taught. What was going forth? It wasn't just hearsay. It wasn't just ideas, but it was, it was the actual word of God that they had established in them that it be taught in a true manner. And Jesus had said, he's probably referring to Jesus in Matthew 10, 10 and other places when Jesus said something like this. He sends the, the initial uh, disciples out and he sends them out and he says, hey, don't take your money bag with you. Don't take your coats or your sandals or your staff because a worker is worthy of his support. Now, it's interesting when you think about Paul because Paul didn't talk about money a whole lot. And Paul never asked for himself. He never went anywhere and took up a collection and took up an offering. Remember, he was a leather worker and he was a tent maker and he never wanted to take away. He never wanted to be thought of as one who was peddling the word of God. And, and I know for me, for well, I still don't, but when I, you go somewhere and share, and I can remember going to so many different places, and especially in the rodeo world, because so many was thought of as, well, they're just doing this so they can take up an offering, you know. And I'd never want to take up an offering because I didn't ever want that to be a reason where somebody thought, well, this is why that, that they're doing that, or this is why she's doing this, or what have you. You want them to experience the Lord. And Paul, as I said, he didn't talk much about money. I don't like talking about money. It's uncomfortable. I've never liked it. In church, I've gotten better because I understand that if we're going to teach and we're going to be aware of the principles of God, then we need to hear about all of it. And it's not ever about, hey, we're in a bind. and we're, It's not about that. It's about understanding the principle of giving and the principle of sowing. We're going to look at 
in a minute, but how many of you know this? And I think, I think so many people don't really understand, you know. They, they think, well, you just come to church, and it's all good, and God's grace is free, and so this ought to be free, and, you know, y'all, y'all were given this facility or whatever the case may be. And, and people don't realize that, it, it you know, God's going to provide, amen. We know God's going to provide. But at the same time, the world that we live in, it takes money, amen. It takes money to pay the bills. It takes money when we want to make improvements and we're investing. It's going to end up costing us over $50,000, just these two bathrooms that that we're getting the work done for free. But it costs money when we want to talk about maybe getting chairs in here. And it costs money for carpet and it costs money for upgrades. You know that when we, I don't matter. It just, it takes money. Our bills every month. This is a great facility, but how many of you, uh, it's a little bit outdated. Can I just tell you that? And the heating and the air conditioning, just the utility in this place I don't know why I'm telling you all this but it's from 1200 to 2000 a month depending on whether it's hot or it's really cold and what we're doing and we have a place in Roby called the hub that is, is nobody even really asks about you know but we have a place over there where every week somebody's over there at this place called no need for need and at twice a week we're over there with kids yesterday we had the 21 30 and fourth graders 11 of them accepted the Lord what is that worth I don't know what it's worth but I know this it costs money to have the place and pay taxes and and insurance and all this stuff and I'm just saying money's part of this world and the church needs money needs resources it needs help so that we can have somebody to teach us the Word of God and have somebody be a part of some of this other stuff so why would Paul insert this this in his closing I mean think about it this is his closing to the Galatian people his Galatian ins- the instructions to them and we it, I think if we think about it, this was a church that Paul and Barnabas had planted. They had set up elders in it. They had probably set up a teaching pastor or whatever that was looked like back then. And and remember, early in Galatians, if we think back, the biggest issue Paul was dealing with was that there was false teachers that had come in. They they were called Judaizers. And they were teaching the people to do it a different way than just following Jesus. And so there's these different teachings that had come in and, and people were, some of them were following them, and some of them were going that direction. And I believe that as the people went, so did some of the support of the local church. And some of the support went, and, 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 and you got these guys, and you're asking them to still stand up and share the word of God, and, and they're not getting any support. And Paul knew the importance of the word of God. Isaiah 40, verse 8, the, flower, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. And Paul's saying this, man, if you've got somebody in that place that's committed to seeking God and hearing his voice and what God's saying through the scriptures, and he's committed to share the unadulterated truth with you, he says commit to support this man. Commit to help this place of worship. Because this is, this, is, this is what we do so many times. We, we think it's no big deal, and so we just, we just shift out, and, and we quit supporting that place, and that place then begins to struggle. Do we understand how, how important it is to hear the true word of God? In a day and age where our culture is so much about acceptance, and it's about comfort, and it's about convenience, and it's about what fits me, and what makes me feel good, and what entertains me, and there's so many flaky doctrines I mean, there just is. There's so many different teachings that are, you know, they got a lot of truth in them, but then they're a little bit over here, and and it's about trying to get people in the doors, and it's about trying to build this magnificent thing and a production. And then we're wondering why so many times lives aren't really changed. Because here's the thing, the true gospel, the true word of God, him coming in our midst, that's what saves us. That's what brings people into the kingdom of God. That's what changes somebody's life. It's not about going through the motions. It's not about a particular style or way of worship. It's about people meeting Jesus, amen? It's about them encountering them in the middle of the road and and meeting this Jesus that saves and redeems and forgives and, and heals and touches and changes and empowers so that they can live different, the true gospel. And I was reminded that, you know what my first calling is? Is the word of God. We can get off doing so many other different things, but, but 
My first calling is to the Word of God and trying to communicate it. And I get busy, and I'm not the greatest. You know what? But I'm trying. I'm trying my best to give you, to give you as close to the, what God's saying as I can. You know, I'm not saying I won't ever miss, but I'm just saying it's His Word that changes us. So He encourages them to support their church, support the place where they hear the Word of God. And then, sowing and reaping. So maybe it is connected. Verse 7, he says this. He says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. So Paul gives this threefold statement and warning here. Number one, do not be deceived. How many of you know that there's a lot of deception in the world that we live in? We're deceived by so many things. So many things sound good, feel good, look good. And not only in this world, but sometimes ourselves. We de- deceive ourselves sometimes, excuse me. So what, what deceives us? We know this. Number one is Satan, the great deceiver. Revelation 12, 9, it says, And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old who is called devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. This is Satan, the great deceiver. John chapter 8, he says, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. He is the father of lies. So the enemy wants to deceive all of us. He wants to lie to us all. He wants to talk us out of our destiny. He wants to tell us that we're no good. He wants us to settle for something way less than God's plan. He lies to us. But not only does the enemy lie, but there's people that lie. It tells us in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they're wanting to their ears tickled. They will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away from the ears of the truth and they will turn aside to myths. Sometimes people will try to talk us out of what God we know is true. Amen. People in our lives try to justify it. This is the way we see it. But then there's also false teachers. There's teachers out there that, that, that sh- twist the truth a little bit, lead people astray a little bit. That's what, not only now, certainly now, but then. In Galatians 3, 1, when, when it, we go back and he's dealing with them about why they're turning away from the simplicity of Jesus. And he asks them, he says, who has bewitched you? Who has deceived you? Why have you turned away? Why have you went another way? And he's telling us, hey, don't, don't be deceived. And then, of course, there's ourself. Anybody good at deceiving themselves? Because we're, master, we're masters at justifying some of our thoughts, some of our actions, some of our ways, some of the things we look at things. We just, we just justify it, you know. We don't, we don't want to measure it according to what God says. We want to say, well, this is okay. And we're comparing it to somebody else that's worse than us. And so we're, we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. And we just have to understand all the ways that we can be deceived. And we're warned by the Lord and by Paul. He says, hey, don't be deceived. Pay attention. Hang on to what's truth. That's why you need the truth spoken into your life. Number two, don't be deceived. Number two, God is not mocked. Mocked. We play games with God sometimes. We mock Him. We acknowledge Him. We'll come to church. We're broken. We're hurting. I'm, man, busted, disgusted. I'm I'm coming before Him. Yes, you are, God. But then things get better. It doesn't fit into my schedule. And so what happens is I'm doing my own thing. And I'm in and out with God. And I'm playing these games with God up and down like He's some sort of a toy that I can either take or leave according to how I feel and what my needs are on this day. And we forget that God is over all. He knows all. He sees all. He knows that when we're, we're walking in the flesh, He knows that when we're really digging in and trying to be led by the Spirit, He knows it all. Let me ask you this. You don't have to answer. But have you ever known someone, because certainly it wasn't you, that was ever hoping that they didn't get caught in a lie? You hoped that they didn't hear what you said. You hope that they didn't find out what you did. You hope that this doesn't come to surface and everybody finds out. We're hoping. Can I tell you this? We need to know this. You're already caught. You and your friend you're hoping for. We're already caught because God sees everything. He says, don't don't mock God. 
We're already caught in a lie. We, we, we're called to live in truth before him. Be real, man. Let's just, let's just be honest. Let's strive to do right by God. Let's, let, let, let's just strive to come after him and check it out. Because it's going to happen when we're struggling. Admit you're struggling. Let's admit that we're struggling. Let's, let's say, hey, man, I, I'm, 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 I'm suffering today. I'm struggling today. But I've got some people in my life that I can say, I, I'm, I'm, it's been a tough week, man. My kids are doing this. My, my job's doing this. My wife's wearing me out. Not that mine ever would, certainly. But I'm just saying, we have to admit it when we're struggling. We have to repent when we, when we went astray because it's just important. Let's get back on track. Let's don't mock God. Let's don't just come to Him in certain times, but let's, let's strive to walk with Him and move forward. And then thirdly, it says, whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. Now, look, this is not karma. This is not good luck. This is not, well, what goes around comes around. This is a godly principle, and this is a truth from the Word of God when He says to him in Hosea 8, verse 7, he says, for they sow the whirlwind, they sow the wind, and they will reap the whirlwind. They're wondering what's going on in their life, and they're wondering why God's not answering all their prayers and God's not doing everything. He said, they don't have to wonder because they've sowed the wind into this thing. Look, you know what? You can have a field, and, and not many of us do it around here, but you can sow corn in this field. You can sow corn in this field and check it out. You are not going to harvest cotton out of this corn. It's not going to happen. You can hope for cotton. You can wish you had some cotton. You can sign up for the program. But if you sign, sowed corn in that field, you're not going to get cotton out of it. And that seems really silly, right? But I wonder how many people do that with God. We're going through life. And we show up whining to everyone in our life and we're whining to God about why nothing's going on in my life. But if the truth be known, it has to do with some of the stuff we've been sowing along the way. Are you with me? And God's saying, I want to help you and I love you a whole, whole bunch. But you're reaping what you've been sowing. And now listen to me. Now, I'm not saying if life's not perfect, you've been sowing bad. I'm not saying that because we, that's a different part of the message. We live in a fallen world. We all go through storms. That's part of faith building. That's part of our testimony. I'm, I'm not saying that. But I am saying that we need to be aware of what we're sowing because God is not to be mocked and we are going to reap what we sow. This is a truth about God's investing. And we're not just talking about material stuff, anything. We're talking about eternity. How many of you, we want, we want a good future in our life. We want a good spiritual inheritance and blessing on my, my life and on our family and on our children and on generations to come. We need to start sowing something that is good and not sowing stuff of the flesh, which is death and destruction and corruption and all that stuff. It's just being aware of what we're sowing. And then he goes on in verse 8 and explains it very simply. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So again, same thing. He says you sow the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. You sow in the Spirit, you're going to reap eternal life. And by the way, eternal life begins now. Amen? Right now. When we die... We didn't just enter into eternal life. It's just a continuation of what we've already started in Christ Jesus. And by the way, for those of us who aren't serving the Lord, when, when, when our life ends, somebody's like, well, I'll be glad when it's just all over. No, it ain't going to be over, Jack. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your eternity is just going to continue to be death and destruction and corruption. And I don't know about you, but I have, and I know many of you have, have reaped some of what we sow. Well, check it out. It's going to be a whole lot worse than that in eternity, and it's just going to keep going. But that's not for you. That's just... God wants us to have eternal life beginning now, which doesn't mean everything's perfect all the time, but it's this, it's an awareness of God's very own life. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit dwelling with us, whatever we're doing, man, that He's walking through us when we're, when we're celebrating victories. But check it out, man, He's pushing us and He's holding us and He's lifting us when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And He says, man, I'm going to be with you to the very end and I'm using this and I'm working out all things together for good and don't let the devil lie to you, but by faith keep coming and keep seeking me because I'm doing something amazing here because I'm with you. 
So it's real simple. I'm done. Not too bad. So in closing, I just say this. Number one, be thankful for and support those who share the true word of God with you. Because it's getting harder and harder to, to get a true, authentic word of God. It really is. When you, when you hear some of the stuff that's going on, and we, and we have to fight for the word of God. And it's, sometimes it's up to us to, as people to invest in it. Man, the world's dying for the word of God. Number two, don't let anyone or anything deceive you. There's always something, somebody, something trying to deceive us. We need to have people in our life to share with. Do we have those people that we can be open and honest? I mean, I know some of you that's in my circle, and, and we, we don't mean we need to tell everybody, but there's people in my life. When, when, when I'm struggling, you know, I'm like, hey, man, Kirk, I'm, I'm, I'm having heck this week. I just don't feel it. I'm give out. It's too much going on. I'm worried about this. We, we need to have people. I said, you know, it's getting us off track. People to share with. We need to get in the Word of God for ourselves. Not If we just hear it on Wednesday and Sunday, man, we're going to starve to death. You know that? We're going to starve to death. We've got to feed ourselves. We've got, we got to hear what the Lord says. You say, well, I, 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 I get it. I know it's good, but I, I really don't. Hey, ask God to help you. You say, I'm just easily deceived. Ask God to help you. Ask God for His Holy Spirit, the teacher of truth. He leads us into all truth, the Word of God tells us. Don't let anything deceive you. As a child of God. Number three, God knows if we're, if we're authentically seeking him or we're just playing games with him. He knows. Be honest. And knowing this in the end, we're going to reap what we sow. So keep sowing good like you're doing now. Seek to sow good and we'll have great things in front of us. Paul encouraged in Galatians. Let us be encouraged. Pray with me. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you for loving us, God, and we do. We thank you for the true word of God. And, and so, Lord, help us to be invested in your word, invested in, in people in our life. And if, it, if that's not here, if that's somewhere else, then, God, let us, let us be invested in those people of giving thanks and encouraging them. And, and Lord, at the same time, let us be invested in, in being that for somebody else. Father, there's so many things in this life that deceive us, God, that makes us question that makes us doubt, makes us try to go the wrong direction. Lord, let us be people that hear your voice in a clear way, that we wouldn't be people that deceive. For you're for us, and the enemy is a liar. And so, Lord, we just declare, Father, that we're not going to be deceived by the world. We're not going to be deceived by people in our life. We're not going to be certain to be deceived by the, the enemy. God, we want to hear your voice. Father, strengthen us so that we could walk forward with you. Lord, let us be aware of what we're sowing. Even if we're going through a difficulty right now, God, let us know that we're sowing now for what we're going to reap tomorrow and in the days of come. Lord, we just thank you for loving us. I just pray that you would meet us here as we close in worship. God, if we're struggling or we're hurting or, or maybe we're here and we're thinking, man, I'm just looking back and I'm thinking about all the stuff I've sowed and maybe that's what's coming up. Lord, let us at the same time hear, hear you say that you can break all that off right now. And we begin sowing new. And that this is a new day that we're not going to be shackled or held because of something that happened yesterday or in the past, God. You're not punishing us, Lord. You want to set us free and walk forward in a new journey. God, we just love you. We ask you to meet us here in this place as we close in worship. We simply need to hear you in Jesus' name.